All the way from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today, I've got a new video where I'm going to talk a little bit about my studio monitoring setup. Get a lot of questions about my monitors, why I chose these, you know, what are some strengths? What are some things to consider when you are picking out monitors? I'm also going to talk about some of the headphones that I'm using. A lot of you are mixing on headphones. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. My main monitor or the A monitors that I'm using are the Event 2030. These are a three-way monitor. And so I'm, I'm really appreciative to have that because the mid-range driver gives me a nice uh, portrayal of the vocals and the mid frequencies that are going on. They're just a lot more balanced monitor than some of the two ways I've had previously. I've been using Event since I started mixing and I had a pair of TR8s, very similar, but th these have a lot more power in the low end. And again, given that they're a three-way monitor, I can just hear a lot more detail in the mid range. Uh, moving down here to my B monitors. These are the legendary Yamaha NS10M stereo. You see them in a lot of studios. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about these because there's plenty of information out there on the internet. If you want to look them up, Basically, they're a studio staple, and uh, I worked in a commercial studio for quite a while, and I got used to them, and so I use them, again, just as a B reference. I'll just flick over and you know hear what's going on in the mids. A lot of you comment on the fact that I have these on the table or on the, my desk, and they're not even at ear level. Uh, this is because I'm not using the NS10s for, you know, like imaging, uh, really anything other than just getting a, uh, a bit of a perspective on the vocal and kind of where the vocal is sitting in terms of the instrumentation, how everything is blended. It just gives me a nice idea of what's going on there with the mids. I'm using a, uh, a Haffler, it's the, I think it's the P1500. This is just a vintage uh, amplifier that I'm using to power these. Obviously the NS10 are passive, meaning you've got to have an amplifier and these actually have a speaker wire, speaker cable that goes and uh, gives you the power to the speaker. So a lot of people swear by the, the P2500 from Hafler. This is a little bit uh, lower powered amplifier. A lot of people use Bryson's and really expensive amplifiers to get the most out of the NS10. Again, I just don't rely on it enough to where I need that much power to kind of give me uh, what I can get out of the NS10. Uh, but uh, you can look into that. You can buy these secondhand. I would not recommend or suggest paying what a lot of people are asking for the NS10s. They, uh, they're they good for what they are, but you can find alternatives. There's actually some more recent Yamaha monitors out there like the HS series. Uh, some stuff like that that'll give you a, a similar portrayal of, of what's going on in your mix and you're not going to have to pay you know an arm and a leg and you're not going to have to get you know a uh, an amplifier for a passive monitor i just think there's a lot better options out here these days than getting the ns10 but again for me i'm just used to them so i do use them now as far as headphones uh right now i'm kind of going back and forth between the ones i've got on now which these are the atom sp5 and then i also have a pair let me reach down here these are open back and these are the allo audio s4 so these just give me uh, a bit more accurate representation of the uh, the stereo field and the the low end is not as hyped in these so i, I like having the open back just to go back and forth i also have some headphones that you all have seen in my other videos some headphones that i've just been using since i started that i still reference on just because i know them really well so a couple of those would be like the um, 7506 from sony uh these i've these are the first really the first uh, reference headphones that i ever had when i got into making music so i just know what these sound like i also have the dt 770 from bayer dynamic i like those they're very comfortable and i know the way that they translate as well so again use what you know if you've gotten used to something you know there's no point in trying to kind of change it up just to change it up if you can get good results go for it as far as what i would recommend for the main monitors i'd love to recommend the event 2030 i do recommend them 
but uh, event is not currently manufacturing them i have contacted a couple of folks at event and road the partner company who uh sells these and, and ma did manufacture them but they're not currently in production i don't know if they're going to be back in production they're saying that there's a good probability of that but as for right now your only option is to pick these up second hand i would look for uh, you know places like ebay or maybe your local pawn shop just be careful about the condition uh, these are built like a tank they're really heavy so you want to make sure that they get shipped properly but as far as the actual build you know i haven't had any problems with them and they're built to last for a long time but you want to make sure that the previous owner has taken care of them so you can look again second hand these are you know the monitors i know and trust but uh, i'm going to put a link to some alternatives just because again they're not making these otherwise i am not currently using a subwoofer that may change in the near future uh, this is a new room, new space, so I'm still getting used to it and I didn't want to introduce a subwoofer until I kind of learned how my monitors are translating and how the room is, you know, reflections. Obviously, I've treated things, but there's still some areas that I'm working on. And so you don't want to throw a subwoofer into the mix until you've kind of got a feel of that stuff. So maybe in a couple months uh, later in the summer, I may add a subwoofer and I'll keep y'all posted on that if I decide to, but again, right now, no sub. I, I use a lot of the tricks that I've shown y'all and the 2030 gives me quite a bit of low end, especially if I'm moving, you know, towards the back of the room and just walking around, I can hear what's going on in the low end really well. All right, y'all, so that is my current monitor setup in 2019 in my studio. Again, pretty simple. I do go out and reference in the real world. I listen on laptops, my uh, earbuds, you know, iPhone, obviously take it into the car. That's a huge reference. So uh, definitely important to take your stuff outside of the studio. Don't think that everyone is going to experience the mix or the master that you're doing in the same way on your studio monitors because again they don't even make my monitors so how could i possibly think that you know someone else is going to be experiencing it in the exact way that i am on these speakers so you got to take them out and see the good thing about these and some other you know really accurate good monitoring setups is they're going to eliminate a lot of guesswork and they're going to make things consistent for you and they're also going to you know help you make educated decisions on what's going to work best across the spectrum in terms of your mix or your master so i hope this is helpful if you have any questions about the 2030 the ns10 any of the headphones i'm using or anything else in terms of studio monitoring feel free to leave a comment below if you have some recommendations for others in the comment section leave that as well would love to hear what y'all are using and trusting for your mixes and masters if you learned anything in the video please like subscribe and consider sharing we'll talk to you soon